if you've ever held the door for someone and they didn't say thank you, we got a story for you today. <laughs> then you're a crypto. Because <laughs> you get bittersweet revenge. <laughs> oh, the revenge is sweet and I love it. Welcome to the Codex Cantina where I am Una. And I am the button pusher crypto. <laughs> If you are new to the Codex Cantina, we take some of the most important stories that have influenced even today's writers. If you're down for a conversational approach to literature, hit that subscribe button to join us. And as always, we start off with publication information, and this is one of the rare times that we do not know the specific date that In the Box was published. However, we do know that it was republished in the Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories, is which we're reading it from. And our copy was translated by Jay Rubin. It was probably written in the 60s to 80s because that's when Taiko Kono, I've been working on the name, Taiko Kono, uh, did most of her writing. And I cannot believe how important and influential of a writer, you know, she apparently was. I, I feel remiss in not having read some of her work earlier. To name some of the quotes from the Wikipedia, we have... Someone whose influence on contemporary Japanese writers is acknowledged to be immeasurable. She was one of the first women to ever serve on the Akutagawa Literary Prize Committee. And there was a very famous U.S. critic and uh, academic who assessed her as one of the truly original voices of the 20th century, beyond questions of gender or even nationality. Those Dang. are strong Ooh. words to say for an author that I have not explored yet. So let's talk about this one today. What are some of the themes that we're going to be experiencing with this story today, Crypto? So we got three main themes. We're going to be looking at social expectations. We're going to be looking at memory of events. And is, is there an expectation to be good or what does it mean to be good? So this story, it's what, three pages? It's, it's incredibly short and it's incredibly hysterical. This, this, is, this is one of the best short stories uh, to make me laugh. That I've ever experienced. This is this is just fantastic. Listen to this. So the narrator <laughs> walks into an elevator at her complex and holds the door open for someone who is rushing to catch it. Okay. But when the stranger enters the elevator and doesn't say thanks, nor wait for the narrator to ask what floor to press for her, and instead just tells her floor nine, well, the effort <laughs> is something the narrator won't stand for. Even though the woman's hands are full with a package, she surely could still have offered the pleasantries for what the narrator was doing for her. So the narrator is going to get off on the third floor, and the other woman, the only other woman in the, in the elevator, mind you, is this woman going to the ninth. As she exit, what she do, Crypto? She does nothing. She just leaves. No, we haven't even said. She swipes up on the elevator oh, 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 oh. and hits all of the the buttons between floors four and eight so that this woman is going to have oh yeah to she stop. christmas trees it she, <laughs> christmas all trees. of them so she's got yeah. to stop at every floor and not only that she doesn't even hit the button to close the door faster as she exits which means this woman with her hands full is going to have to have the door open and wait and not be able to hit the closed door on each and every floor all the way up to nine hysterical right it's like a fantasy oh, come true <laughs> i mean if you're brutally mean for some odd reason to a random stranger i guess oh you you've had those thoughts i know you have so the narrator years years later <laughs> recalls this memory right maybe with a little bit of regret she says she knows the revenge was excessive and maybe she didn't want to believe she was actually that rude but she also admits that she didn't want the other woman to think she's normally like that if she were to run into her again Either way, she's forgotten what this woman looks like. Until one day, on the elevator, the person requests, ninth floor, please, and adds the please <laughs> this time. And also uh. throws in, but you could press all of the buttons if you wish. Meaning, oh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's the lady again, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So think our narrator, thinking that this woman is trying to one-up her by telling her she could press the buttons if she wanted to, doesn't give in she says great and whoop, christmas trees the elevator again <laughs> again, uh, again. Uh, so the elevator kind of gets stuck and there's the question of you know should i press this emergency button to get out and the woman's like i'm in no rush 
<laughs> and our narrator kind of turns to the side, showing off her side profile and plot. So good. I loved it. I loved it. I haven't laughed this hard at a short story in a long time. And it's for such an extremely short story, it just, it had everything that you could want in in a kind of comedy short story. I was very impressed for my first outing here. And I think we can easily relate, right? We've all been in those situations where we did something nice and maybe we expected something in return, whether it be a thank you or, you know, an appreciation or something like that. And, you know, we have to kind of remember, too, that this story is written in Japan where the social obligations are much more felt than here in America. You know, when I was studying Japanese, you know, our, t- our instructor always told us about how important it was to to not stand out. You wanted to be normal in Japan. And it's also important to show appreciation that you were always overly gracious for everything. And you never were that person that took things for granted. So this is also being written from a society where, I mean, it's not that it's, it's, you know, unheard of. I mean, it's unheard of kind of here. But it's even more out there when you think about it from a cultural context of Japan. For me, I thought it was funny without knowing a lot of the Japanese etiquette because I know personally that if I hold the door for somebody, and I've done this before, I'm leaving a store, somebody's coming up, and I'll hold it for them, right? And you, Mm -hmm. what do you expect them to say? Thank you. (laughs) And when they don't, I get bitter about that, and I'm just like, okay, this is a teachable moment. When somebody holds the door for you and does something nice, you say thank you. So I'll turn and I'll look in the store and yell at them after they've walked by me and be like, oh, you're welcome. And like this really sassy tone. And then sometimes they'll get startled. They'll be like, oh, uh, thank you. And for me, I don't know why I get satisfaction from, from that, but it is petty, right? Because <laughs> what if that person, you know, had just been leaving the hospital visiting, you know, a dying family member? What if the person had just got a flat tire? We we don't know what's going on in their life. And just like, there is no clues of what's going on in these two lady lives in this, in this elevator. And so I guess that's what makes it even more hilarious is somebody could be so petty without knowing the horrible things somebody could be experiencing. And this poor lady standing there with her hands full. Well, it's a social contract, right? If, if you enter into a situation where someone does something nice to you, right? At least I'm going to speak from an American perspective. The social contract is you say, thank you. It's simple. It costs you nothing. And of course, there's always, you know, like you said, there's there's reasons of either emotional distraught. Uh, there could be ableist reasons, like maybe the person doesn't speak. Like maybe they're deaf and they haven't learned to vocalize, for example. Uh, I've, I've, I've actually had a person, you know, do, do the thank you for me from sign language. But um, we never know what's going on with the other person. But the but most people understand there is a social contract of saying expressing gratitude for something like that. And what's so funny is is like you said, you are an extremist. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> not true. a lot of people that will go to the level of being like, hey, you're welcome. <laughs> like like you never know. Like like someone could turn around and fight you, right? But most people won't go to that extreme. Like you, you are definitely an extremist in that end. But I will say there has been times where I've seen some people that have been so rude and I have these like fantasies of like wanting to get back at them. Oh, I should have done this. This would have been a really jerk move. And this story is that this story is that fantasy that you've lived out when someone didn't fulfill the social contract. And I, you know, one of the things that the story may be asking too is when does it justify retribution, right? If you enter a cartoon to a contract, and you don't fulfill your end of saying thank you and expressing it, what does that mean, right? People can be rude back to you, such as Christmas treeing you. (laughs) And the other question that you have to think about this too is is that I'm doing it to be a nice person, but then when I don't get reciprocated those, quote, expectations, I turn into a mean person. Does that negate the nice thing that I did? 
Or am I only being mm. nice because I want that acknowledgement in return? And what does that say about me as a person? I'm not holding the door to be nice. I'm holding right. the door having this expectation that somebody's going to thank me for doing something mm. for them. And it makes mm. me feel like, you know, a hero. And it, you know, it may not be saving, you know, children from a burning orphanage, but it is that tiny little bit of, you know, I'm the big guy hero here for holding the door for you. And that's not how I think we were supposed to be raised to be polite and just do things out of the kindness of our hearts, expecting something in return, because then it's not genuine. Do you believe in altruism? I want to say yes, but probably not. <laughs> People are terrible. I teach my students all the time that humans are greedy. We really are. And that's sad. <laughs> For those that don't believe in altruism, they honestly think that the only reason you are entering into this social contract is because you don't want to have retribution against you. The only reason that you do this is because you don't want someone to Christmas tree. <laughs> so you go up an elevator, right? Slam the door on your face as you're carrying a package, right? There's nothing... Okay, some of these might be physical and might have, you know, reason for, to enter into the law's <laughs> territory. But a lot of times when it comes to these, like, niceties... There's no retribution from like a law. It's just it's you and them, and if you don't if you don't treat them well, they won't treat you well. I, I'm, I'm not trying to come back to a golden rule thing. I promise, but that is why some people don't believe in altruism. Is that you want to make sure that you're not taken advantage of, and by being nice, that makes it less likely that they can take advantage of. There's there's actually some really interesting studies out there called the Dictator Game. If you look it up. And they have these different experiments. And basically, the more control that they gave that there would be no retribution, the more advantage people are willing to take of others. And that's a very common study that people will bring up when it comes to altruism and saying that, does this not truly exist? Do we only enter into social contracts because we're worried about retribution? If you take away people's ability to do that, do you start seeing a little bit more of the... Um, greedy or self-interest from people mm, yeah I, I guess i'm hobbying a hobbist uh like thomas hobbs the philosopher you know and that people are not good and they're going to be self-centered in their self-interest just like the lady pushing the buttons she got what she wanted to feel that satisfaction at least oh, she thought she gosh. did right this makes me it, there's an author i know that you, this sounds to me like you would like this author and i can't stand this author but i don't even want to mention her name let's talk about reliable <laughs> let's talk about reliableness let's talk about reliableness of the narrator in this one did you notice that the first time when this lady walked into the elevator this kind of, this kind of comes to our, some of our earlier points that she was mad that she didn't get a chance to say what floor she's just like ninth floor expecting her to do this for her but later on in the story did you notice that she said that basically that she recalls having specifically asked what floor for this woman, meaning this is the complete opposite of what actually happened, meaning she's an unreliable narrator. Not that she's lying, but that she may be misremembering things to make herself look better in retrospect. Again, a very humanistic trait for us to always portray ourselves in a better light. 100%. I, I didn't pick up on this originally, but now that I think back at the story, uh, it does ring a bell and that our memories are faulty and we want to paint ourselves in the picture of I'm the hero, I'm the, you know, the knight in shining armor and, and I did right and this person did me wrong, especially when you're recalling or telling these stories because you're probably trying to convince your audience if you're telling this to your wife or your kid or your grandma, you want to be seen as the hero and the other person the villain. Yeah, yeah. Fun story, very short. So I think we've milked it for a lot here, not to say that it was everything, but I think it's an appropriate time to mention that we've going to put a Taiko Kono playlist down below where we will have some other talks from her if you wanted to check out some of those. So guys, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Let's move into our subjective wrap up and ratings. Crypto, what are you going to give this one? I'm going to give this one a solid eight. Uh, I, I laughed, so you're going to get a good rating for me when you make me laugh. Um, besides the comedy and, you know, a few of the talking about the social constructs, there's a little bit of a teachable moment here, obviously, of, you know, don't do nice things for some expectation in return. Just do nice things to do nice things. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good little story. It's, it's very quick and easy to read. This would be a good one to have, you know, as a icebreaker or something inside of a classroom. 
That's a good point because there's, I guess, the lessons on both sides. Don't do things with with expectations that they have to be nice or enter that social contract. But also, freaking say thanks. <laughs> <laughs> be a little polite when someone does something. I think I think the lesson goes both ways on this story. So that's a fun one. I'll go For eight sure. as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely recommend this story in the uh, Penguin Book of Short Stories. Guys, if, if you enjoyed today's conversation, I know some people don't know what to say, feel free just to leave a little heart emoji or maybe leave us a nine. You can do the nine emoji for the floor nine. <laughs> people getting up on that floor. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Niner. I give it a nine. Oh, we should have given it, it nines. Oh, oh I'm, okay. We missed out there. You give, you give it a nine, <laughs> I'm going to give it a three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're going to give it every, I'm going to give it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I give it every number. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, we post videos every Monday and Thursday. Thank you for checking us out. Thank you for the support that you give and interacting with us. We appreciate it. We'll, uh, We'll look forward to seeing you in the comments. If not, hit that subscribe button to check out more videos from us in the future. Una out. Peace.